we are in beautiful Alaska and posting all kinds of lovely photos and you would think we would be getting a ton of questions about what are the roads like and how's the weather but nope. Nope. The number one question, how's that gas RV handling? How's that gas RV performance? Which we totally understand because last year we created a video that was an RV smackdown of gas versus diesel. But at that time, we had never really truly owned or driven or lived in anything other than a diesel. So we were just going off of test drives. Now, by no means are we gas RV experts now. We're only, what, three months into this coach? Yeah, exactly. Yes. But we've been on some hardcore roads. We've taken a lot of miles. We've definitely... Hills, mountains. And one thing we've noticed is the, the biggest note that we get from people in our gas versus diesel, our original gas versus diesel, yeah. is fuel economy and hey well gas is cheaper well look back here gas is actually more expensive in Alaska than diesel which yeah. is totally opposite so that whole point goes out the window yeah well and it seems to change state by state yeah. providence by providence you know so I feel like that's not really a valid argument we're talking about small chump change really at that point at the end of the year of you know which one do you pay more fuel in it's not a huge difference not like you would think but there are some big differences. In the performance, the ride handling, and a few of those other things. So yes. that's, that's what we're gonna talk about. What we're gonna talk about. <laughs> Let's go. Come on for a ride. We got some big mountains ahead. first time I got behind the wheel of this coach and drove it, I made the analogy of it's similar to driving our last coach, which was a diesel, with the emergency brake on. The acceleration is slow, it's lagging, the shift patterns, all that kind of stuff. It's just, it's like driving with the engine brake, or the emergency brake on, because there's no engine brake. Here we go, I'll give you a taste. Zero to 60 in about one minute. There's not a lot of bumps or potholes or anything else. And when we're just driving straight like this and on a good road, you honestly wouldn't know a big difference. The the noise levels, the, the ride, everything seems pretty similar right now. You wouldn't notice a big difference if you were traveling in a gas coach or in a diesel coach, at least not the ones that we have owned or that we have used, ridden in, lived in, all of that. Where you do get a difference is when those conditions change, which we will experience here shortly. In just a couple minutes, we're going to head up this mountain ahead, and it's quite a long grade. It's not the steepest grade, but it's long, and I really would just like you to hear me and hear what the engine sounds like right now at 55 miles an hour on this flat section, because in just a couple minutes, we'll be up that hill, and it will be totally different. You almost can't even hear the engine right now. We are starting the hill. It's still not bad in here. We're doing 50 now. So I'm gonna pick up the speed. I'm gonna try to hold 50 miles an hour going up this hill. Now the 
big question is, can you have a conversation in a gas RV? 80% of the time, you don't have an issue having a conversation with the person sitting next to you. Going up hills, and especially going up mountains, this is definitely just a hill. It does get difficult to hear the music. It gets difficult to have a conversation. Sorry, my ears are popping. But it's not horrible. We're still doing 52. Now, one thing I find interesting is, I thought we would hit in a gas coach, we'd hit a hill or a mountain, and we'd be going 20 miles an hour just creeping up. It hasn't been the case so far. We've been able to keep cruising at 40 or 50 miles an hour, no problem. And it seems to be, power-wise, of getting up a mountain at a certain speed, almost the same as our diesels have been, maybe a little less. Um, now you can hear we're going a little bit steeper grade. The engine's struggling a tiny bit. I have my foot, my pedal to the metal. We're doing 45. And my ears are popping. All right, we are holding steady at 45 here. The engine has not shifted down, which I'm surprised. Gaining a little speed. We still haven't downshifted. So I guess that this hill is not quite steep enough. But we're almost back up to 50 miles an hour. We have a good curve up here. It's uh, recommending 45 miles an hour, so I had to slow down. We're going to see if we can pick our momentum back up after this curve. in my opinion, and I'm going to go ahead and kick it on right now. We're doing 55. I need to slow down. So you hear that engine kick up. It's downshifted me, and it'll hold this shift pattern as long as we're going downhill until the RPMs get to a certain level, and it'll automatically shift. It's effective. It just doesn't work as well. I guess I already said that, but... That's how I feel about it. All right, I just deactivated it, so we're back normal. Uh, while we're talking about engine brakes, the brakes on a gas coach, I feel like they aren't, the stopping power's not quite there, the same as it was in a diesel. So our air brakes in our diesel coach felt like they could stop me faster, stop me at a shorter distance, and overall, that made me feel more safe. But now that we've been in the gas coach for a while, I know it takes me longer to stop, but it is a safety thing. And that's one of the downsides of a gas coach versus a diesel coach with a diesel coach with air brakes. We recently ran the numbers and on this gas coach, we're getting about six miles to the gallon, six to seven. And in the diesel RVs that we've owned, we've gotten almost double that. 
part of what comes with that means we travel half as many miles on a tank of fuel as well. So we find that we're filling up a lot more often and we're definitely at the mercy of whatever gas stations are along the way because we can't travel quite as far. So it requires a lot more planning on that front, that's for sure. Another big difference between gas and diesel is the transmission. So currently, there's only five gears in this coach, and we've heard through the grapevine that Ford is coming out with a new transmission that's going to have six gears, which should definitely help people buying newer RVs, newer than 2016. Uh, but for those of us with this, this particular one and buying used, then five gears is not quite enough. It's just doesn't have the power, the gear ratios aren't good enough to climb fast, uh, they're loud, the shift patterns are kind of odd. Overall, it's not very, it's not a smooth driving experience when it comes to shifting. And the onboard computer that's built in doesn't give me any information, so I don't know what gear I'm in uh, when I'm traveling, which is kind of a bummer. I'm used to having that information uh, on all the diesel coaches we have. And, as you can tell, we've hit a little bit more of a rough road. On the same line of talking about the computer and the transmission is the cruise control. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on here. Set my speed to 55. Now, in, in my previous coaches, we've been able to just set it to 55, and it'll handle hills, like small hills and downhills and straightaways really well. Now, I feel like the system in, in this gas coach is lackluster, to say the least, because I hit the smallest incline and it shifts down three gears what? to take me up a hill, which is really annoying. Uh, I've gotten used to it now, so I just turn it off anytime I see a hill in the distance, but that kind of defeats the purpose of cruise control, having to constantly monitor it. Oh, hey, look. Oh, dude, double moose! It is double moose! Crossing the road. Oh, don't run, little guy. I'm going slow. Awesome. Love it. We've got a gradual downhill and uphill here. I'm setting the cruise control for 53 miles per hour. Downhill, it does a pretty good job, except it does this weird shift thing where it like way down shifts you to slow you down on steeper inclines, and then it doesn't ever want to come out of that shift, that low gear. It's definitely annoying. So we're going up this incline now. It's a steady incline. My foot is off the gas. Downshift, downshift, downshift. So I think we're in third gear just to climb this little tiny hill. And now we've reached the top of the hill and we're heading back downhill. Normally you or I would just feather off and other cruise controls will do that, well, they'll feather off and they won't keep you right at 55. This one just wants to muscle through. It's very archaic. Very archaic. But again, it's not it's not horrible. I can deal with it. I just turn it off when I get to a little hill like this one up here. This is a tiny hill, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. Otherwise it's gonna downshift to third. I keep my momentum. And then I'm at the top of the hill. I reset it. It's not a big deal. Black bear up ahead on the road. Oh, he's running off to the left. Sorry. Dang, dang, dang. Sorry, black bear. One big difference to me as mostly a passenger, because I'm the one that works and makes food while going down the road, is the chassis. There is a difference in a gas chassis versus a diesel chassis, and almost most gas RVs are all made on this same Ford chassis with slight variances here and there on struts or whatever. 
The one thing that I've noticed is that there is more sway side to side with the gas than there is with the diesel. Now granted, this is a rough road. Not horrible, but it's not exactly stellar. Thanks a lot, though. And you can feel the bumps a bit more, not insanely more. I mean, if you're on a rough road, even in a diesel coach, unless you're in like a tag axle, you're going to feel it. But it's the side to side sway that you feel a lot more and that I notice a lot more in the gas than I did in the diesel. It's not a deal breaker. It's just something to keep in mind. After all of that, showing you all the downsides that we found, now we're back on a nice smooth road and none of it matters. You know, if somebody asked me gas or diesel, I would say if money wasn't an option, yeah. diesel, for sure, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, but if we would have never owned a diesel and we only ever owned a gas, we would be just fine with that because Ignorance is less and we wouldn't know the difference. Especially on a road like this, it really doesn't matter. I could care less if I was in a diesel or a gas. No, the ride is so similar. Like I said, you wouldn't know the difference if you were in a diesel or in a gas. It's only the steep upgrades, rough roads, and sharp turns that you really start to notice the difference. So gas still totally works, but if you have the budget, go for the diesel. If you're super picky about your ride and power, then go for the diesel. But otherwise, a gas coach will get you around same as any of them. Tell us your thoughts in the comments below. And what's your take? Because it's the never-ending debate. Everybody always has an opinion. And we'll see you next time. Yep.